Hey everyone, back again with another Flutter tutorial. And in this session, we will look into how to integrate Firebase Analytics right inside our Flutter app. And what we have here is a simple example of the same where you have integrated Firebase Analytics right inside our Flutter app. And broadly speaking, Firebase Analytics is a kind of service provided by the Firebase itself. It helps us to create and maintain records about the user engagement, their behavioral pattern, the demographic activities, and much more which on the other hand can be used for marketing your targeted audiences, increase the app's performance based upon the user engagement and so on. So generally speaking, Firebase Analytics by default is capable enough to record few user attributes like the user's demographic information or the places in which your app is being currently viewed, the pages which gets the most recent hits and much more. And apart from these default attributes which the Firebase Analytics records, you can also create custom events in Firebase Analytics to record other user attributes. And in this video, we are going to explain this Firebase Analytics with one simple example. We have a simple Flutter app with a bottom navigation bar. And inside this bottom navigation bar, we have three items. And each item is going to correspond to individual pages. Like we have the home page, then the business page, and finally we have the profile page. And our use case or scenario here is, we need to record how many users this is the home page, or the business page, and the profile page. Or in other words, I need to maintain clear record of the number of users or the view count of each pages. So this is what we need to achieve here with the help of the Firebase Analytics. Say for example, if I click this home page, then move over to the business page and again come back to the home page. Now our page count for the home page should be two and the page count for business page should be one. And if you now head over to the Google Analytics dashboard, you'll be able to see the user who are currently using your app. Right now, there is only one active user and you can also see the geographical information of that user as well. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to see much more of these informations. Here we have a list of few events which is being recorded, like the screen view, the session start, and so on. Here the pages track is some custom event which you have defined in this Flutter app. And if you click this, we try to pass two attributes like the page name and page index. And if you click this page name, you will see that the page count for home page is 1 and if I click this business page, you should now see that a new entry of business page should be created here. Just the same way, if I click this profile page, then the business page and the home page, it needs to create individual records for each pages and those needs to be reflected in real time. As, I, as we keep navigating to each pages, the count of each page keep altering, right? So this is basically what we are trying to achieve in this video series. So this is all about what we are about to discuss in this video. And if you are super excited about this tutorial, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel wherein we post regular videos about Flutter tutorials and Flutter animations. So what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button now so that you won't miss any of the craziest Flutter updates which you are going to share in the future videos. Hope you got a better understanding of what we are about to discuss in this video. With this idea and without any further delay, let's directly dive into the video and get started. Well, this entire video series can be broken down into four different segments. The first would be the initial setup, where we will discuss about the necessary packages and dependencies which we need to add. Following which, we will walk you through the basis of creating a project in Firebase. And down the line, we will also implement few logical codes inside our Flutter project. And finally, we need to update few changes on the Xcode side to get the app running. So these are the four different segments in which this video is being divided into. And the reason is that we want you to feel comfortable and make it easily understandable for the beginners. Well, now let's try to address this one after the other. Let's start by creating a Flutter project. Let's name our Flutter project and hit enter. Now we have the basic counter example app up and ready. Let's get rid of these comments. Let's remove this home page class and create a separate folder called presentations inside which we have the screens inside the screens we have the home page here inside the home page we have a stateless widget class with an empty scaffold here inside the pack, we need to add two dependencies one is going to be the Firebase Analytics
and second is going to be the Firebase core. After adding these two dependencies, now let's head back to the main.dat file. Here inside the main.dat file, the home points to home page. Let's try to rename this home page to the initial page. Because we already have a tab called home page right inside our bottom navigation bar. So we don't want to have any naming conflicts right inside our implementation process. So let's try to name it as the initial page. Here in say the initial page, let's try to build up the basic UI part. Now let's try to convert this stateless widget class to a stateful widget class. And here in say the screens, let's try to create individual dot files for home page, business page and the profile page. Let's group them under the bottom navigation bar underscore screens folder. Here we have three different dot files, each corresponds to home page, business page and the profile page. And the skeleton is going to be very simple, we have a column widget which contains the icon as well as the text widget which corresponds to that particular page. Right? So these are the three basic pages which we are going to have for our bottom navigation bar. First let's start by creating few variables. Here we have the selected index which is going to hold the current selected index of the bottom navigation bar. By default it is set as 0. Secondly let's try to create a list called the page names and finally we are once again going to have a list called the widget options which is going to hold the class names of home page, business page and the profile page. Following which right inside the scaffold let's start by building up the app bar. Following the app bar inside the body let's try to define the widget based upon the index item which is being selected in the bottom navigation bar. Finally right below the body we need to define the bottom navigation bar which takes the bottom navigation bar widget. Here we have three items. The first is going to be the home page followed by the business page and finally we have the profile page. And if you want to customize your bottom navigation bar, you can also provide the color for the selected item. And we also set the current index variable which is the selected index which you have defined at the very top. And finally, we need to define the on tap callback function. Here inside this function, we make use of the set state in order to update the state based upon the user events. Now with this, we have almost completed building up the basic UI part for our Flutter app. And all you need to do is, we need to create a project in Firebase and try to integrate our Flutter app and the Firebase. So let's try to do that. Here inside the Firebase, let's try to create a new project. We need to provide the name for a Firebase project and hit continue. And here make sure you enable this Google Analytics for this project. If you already have a Google Analytics project, you can select that. Or if you want, you can create one by heading over to the Google Analytics console. And finally, create project. With this, we have successfully created our Firebase project. Now we need to integrate this Firebase project with our Flutter app. Integrating our Flutter app and Firebase is now easier than ever before. With just three simple steps, we will be able to integrate our Flutter app and Firebase. And if you remember, we have already made a simple video about how to integrate our Flutter app and Firebase, where we have explained step by step process of integrating our Flutter app and Firebase in just three simple steps. And if you are new to this video or if you have missed the previous video, I recommend you to watch this video for integrating your Flutter app and Firebase in the most easier way. I will also leave the link for that video at the card at the top right as well as in the description. Now for integrating your Flutter project, you can just click this Flutter icon. And you see that we just have three simple steps for integrating your Flutter app and Firebase. As I have already installed this Firebase CLI, let's click next and try copy this and head over to the VS code. Now paste that code here. And at the root of your Flutter project directory, we need to run this command. So let's copy and paste it over here. Alright, now let's hit next. And here we need to update the main.add file. Say the main.add file, let's update the run method. With this, we complete integrating our Flutter app and Firebase. Now let's turn our focus in writing the logical part for sending data right from Flutter app to the Google Analytics. And here inside the Firebase console, under the Analytics tab, you can click this dashboard to view the logs which is being recorded from your Flutter app. 
right now we haven't integrated or written any custom events for recording any user engagements and that is the reason you don't see any logs here in your firebase analytics dashboard once we try to create custom events or run our app we'll be able to view few demographic information which is being recorded by the firebase analytics by default and if you want to see real time or live activity data you can just click this view more in google analytics because firebase analytics actually runs on top of google analytics here inside the google analytics you can head over to the reports tab and inside the real time you will be able to see the number of users who are currently using your app right now we are not running the app so you don't see any information here now so let's try to restart our app and if you now head over to the firebase analytics you will see that since our app is running in real time you will be able to see a log being created here inside the firebase analytics dashboard we have one active user and by default the firebase analytics is able to record few of the user attributes like the first open the screen view session start and the user engagement if you click this first open basically it provides with few other attributes so these are the basic attributes with the firebase analytics records by default you don't need to write separate code for monitoring or recording these set of informations and what we are left behind is that we need to write custom events in order to record the number of page visit count for business page home page and the profile page now let's try to focus on that here inside of flutter project right inside the initial page we need to create an instance for firebase analytics after which in here inside the init state we need to make use of the set analytics collection enable and pass in the boolean variable which is true once it is done here inside the on tap callback we need to write a custom event wherein we pass the attributes including the page count and the page name so here inside the on tap event let's make use of the log event method so this log event method we get as a result of the installation of firebase analytics package here inside the log event method we will pass two attributes one is going to be the name and second is going to be the parameters which is going to be in the key value pair we pass two attributes one is the page name and the page index so page name is basically what we have defined here so home page business page and profile page just to make it more human readable in the firebase analytics dashboard so we pass the page name as well as the page index which we get which we get as a result of the selected index tab now with this we have completed creating a custom log event here in the firebase analytics dashboard with the name as the pages track and if you now restart your app we should now be able to view the page count being displayed in the firebase analytics dashboard here and say the google analytics dashboard if you scroll all the way down under the event section you don't see the custom event listed out here the event name which we have provided is the pages track but we don't see them listed here there might be multiple factors which are involved in making your custom event getting reflected here in the dashboard basically it may take around 30 minutes to 1 hour for the google analytics to show custom events in the dashboard or secondly we need to name our custom event as simple and meaningful because if we try to provide a lengthy name for our event then that might violate with the google analytics tools in such cases your event may not be listed or recorded here in the dashboard so make sure you provide your event log name small and meaningful in the snake case syntax or as a final option you can stop your app uninstall it and reinstall it again to see the changes getting reflected in the dashboard if none other thing works you can head over to the firebase console under analytics you will be able to see the debug view here inside the debug view unlike google analytics dashboard you should be able to see the changes getting reflected in real time but right now we don't have any registered devices to show the debug view now let's try to register our app and try to view the changes here in the debug view now let's try to enable the debug view for our mobile app since we are using ios device for this project we need to open the ios folder in xcode let's try right click it and try to open in xcode here inside the xcode click product scheme and edit scheme under the run section here we have the arguments under the arguments click this plus icon and set the debug enable flag now if you run your flutter project from your xcode you should be able to see the changes being displayed in the debug view of your firebase console and as you can see that inside the firebase console here in the debug view you'll be able to see the logs being recorded in real time if i try to change the tabs here in the bottom navigation bar those things should be reflected here in the debug view and see that our custom event name is going to be the pages track 
and since I have clicked this pages multiple times, you see that records being created here. With this, if we now head over to the Google Analytics dashboard, previously we don't see the pages track event getting displayed here. But now we are able to see the pages track event getting listed down here in this list. If you click this pages track, the two parameters which you try to pass is the page name and the page index. And you can also see them getting listed down here. And under the page name, we have even count as 9. As you click this, it tries to show individual page counts for each of the three pages, including the business page, profile page, and the home page. And with this data, you can now infer that the home page has got two page visits, and the profile page has got three page visits, and the business page has got four page visits. And if I try to once again click this business page again, it should now change from four to five. As you can see, it has changed from 4 to 5. So this is how it, you will be able to record your user events and other user behaviors in real time with the help of Firebase Analytics. So this is one simple example of how to use Firebase Analytics in order to record the page visit count for your mobile app. And if you want me to make more detailed tutorial about this Firebase Analytics, let me know them in the comments below. And if you find this video useful, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I will see you again in the next one.